welcome to the uh, premiere episode of my show on Spoonie. Uh, it's Spoonie Radio. My name is Rob Carson, and this is Sound Bites. Sound Bites. See what I did there? You know, because it's a uh, it's oral media, and uh, and it's talking about food. Yeah. Uh, I asked some people on Facebook uh, for a title, and that's what we came up with. So anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, I'll just tell you a couple things about myself real quick. First of all, I'm really glad to be here. Uh, really glad to have been invited to this uh, marvelous, marvelous enterprise. Uh, it is a it is an honor to be here. Uh, I am a, a talk radio host, nationally syndicated comedy writer. Uh, I also am an audio video podcaster. And, uh, and I just so happen to have about 100 cooking videos on the web because I've been uh, chasing my passion uh, two passions, actually, politics and political satire and cooking because food brings us together, um, and it certainly does. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say anything about Doc Thompson. Uh, he is uh, obviously one of the people who made this all possible, and his uh, his passing has left a void here and in broadcasting as a whole, and uh, I did not know him, but my prayers, and I hope your prayers are with he, uh, him and his family. All right? Okay. So I've got a lot of things I want to get to today. I'm uh, going to talk about, uh, can, can, a, can a Super Bowl commercial, and you know, the Super Bowl is over and everything, but can, it, can a uh, Super Bowl ad really give you a brain gasm? Did you have that happen when you watched the Super Bowl? Did you have a brain gasm? <laughs> I'm going to explain what that's all about coming up. Also, another beer-related thing, uh, Bud Light decides to go after healthy. Um, does this does this matter when it comes to drinking beer? Does, does corn syrup in your beer really bother you? If you, you know, if you like the brand you got, I'm going to touch on that here. Um, grocery stores still leery of delivering groceries. People aren't really into it yet, but they're hoping for a major explosion. Um, fast food chain, one fast food chain changing more locations than any place in the world. Uh, when a bottle of wine will cost you around the world most and least expensive. Got some great, uh, fast food news on the way. Got some other news, uh, including sugary drink labels in the city of San Francisco. Um, the federal judge said, nah, nah. So get ready to have some fun. Uh, of course, uh, thank you for, for watching and uh, listening, I should say. You can also watch on uh, YouTube this broadcast. Uh, just look for Rob Carson, Rob Carson on YouTube. Okay, All right. you can see my lovely face in my lovely kitchen set. <laughs> All right. So can a Super Bowl really give you a, uh, a brain gasm? Uh, apparently there is a uh, ASMR commercial, which starred uh, Zoe Kravitz. It was viewed online 10 million times before the Super Bowl. And it shows uh, uh, Zoe Kravitz whispering into a pair of microphones and softly tapping on a bottle. Now, do you recall that? Did you have a brain gasm? Okay. So, basically, autonomous sensory meridian response is an enjoyable or relaxing sensation when accompanied by a tingly feeling. I feel that way when I have a really good steak. <laughs> <laughs> a large online community claims that the clips on YouTube provide a response likened to the warm tingling on the skin in some viewers. I, I don't think I heard that or felt that. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and, and listen to this. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, uh, go ahead and and uh, and uh, and see it. But here is just listen intensely here and see if you have a uh, and don't be afraid to admit you had a brain gasm if you did. OK, here we go. Here it comes. Anything yet? Let's all experience something together. This place, so pure, you can feel it. So pure, you can taste it. Michelob Ultra Pure Gold. Beer in its organic form. Uh, anybody else? Any anybody? 
Anybody have a brain gasm out there? Are you just tired, too tired to, to say anything? <laughs> I, I didn't, uh, you know, nothing against uh, Zoe there. It uh, didn't happen for me. I mean, I, I understand the, you know, she's a very attractive woman and she's got that sexy voice. And somehow when a woman whispers like that, it's hot, I guess. You know? I, I don't know. I'm not so sure that's revolutionary advertising. I, you know, I could be wrong. But you guys could be brain-gasming all over the place for all I know. I have no, no idea. I can't see you, so, you know. <laughs> they, you know, they're always coming up with something, right? They've got to come up with some sort of a new take. They've got a, well, apparently it worked because the, just the word brain-gasm got 10 million views before the Super Bowl even aired. So that, that worked. So beer companies and corn farmers not too happy about the uh, no corn syrup ad in Bud Light. Uh, Bud Light had a Game of Thrones uh, uh, joust scene where the knight was knocked off his horse. And and then there was another one where they uh, were at the Bud Light castle, I guess, and, and the, there was a, a giant vat of corn syrup. And, and uh, well, that's not our corn syrup. We have to take it to another one of the other breweries that actually use corn syrup. Here is the, uh, here is the ad. Let's go ahead and hear the ad and, uh, and then hear what, uh, what corn growers are saying about and it. And that's how you brew it. Um, my king, this corn syrup was just delivered. That's not ours. We don't brew Bud Light with corn syrup. Miller Light uses corn syrup. Let us take it to them at once. There we go. They're going, taking the corn syrup. But if something did happen, we'd eat the wizard first, right? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. oh, brewers of Miller Light, we received your corn syrup by mistake. That's not our corn syrup. We received our shipment this morning. You're joking. Try the Coors Light Castle. They also use corn syrup. <sighs> Can you smoke outside? Oh, brewers of Coors Light, is this corn syrup yours? Well, well, well. Looks like the corn syrup has come home to be brewed. <laughs> To be clear, we brew Coors Light with corn syrup. Ah. Bud Light, brewed with no corn syrup. Okay, does that make you want to uh, drink Bud Light more than Coors Light or Miller Light? And I'm just going to say it. And, and I know it'll make some of you mad, and, and I'm sorry, but all three of those beers are terrible. All three of those beers are terrible. They're, they're beers that you should have drank in college. But they're they're just not very good beer. They're just they're not very good beer. When you look at the the landscape of beer, and really, I think I think the whole craft brewery movement and the the quality beer movement started when I was like in my early twenties, in the nineties, and and it's changed the face of brewing. It is it's changed the face of 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 flavor of beer. It is it is it is amazing. It is amazing because yes, in college I drank I drank Miller Lite. You know why I drank Miller Lite? Like in college in my first year. Well, I didn't drink Miller Lite in college. I drank Milwaukee's Best Light, which is oh dear God in heaven. It, it's the worst thing you could ever 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 imagine. It was a dollar forty nine a six pack. I don't think it's gone up in price. But that was really cheap. And when I got out of college, I remember everybody's drinking Bud Light, and I liked Bud Light. But then I heard, oh, Bud Light has much more carbohydrates than uh, than the, the Miller Light. Miller Light has much fewer carbs, and so I drink Miller Light. And now I taste both of them and go, yuck. That would sit in my a garage refrigerator for years. I might even end up moving with it before I would consider even drinking it. Sorry. So another thing, another big thing that the Bud Light and I, I, I. Maybe they need a keto diet version of Bud Light. Would that would that increase the uh, Bud Bud Light uh, drink ship drinkership or you know what I mean? <laughs> would that would that help? Uh, because I don't know if this this new there's a, there's a Bud Light commercial that has a giant. Uh, they're putting a new nutrition label on Bud Light. Okay, so that now look Bud Light now with a new larger nutrition label, and I'm like, so. Really? Well, apparently uh, corn farmers and stuff are a little ticked off. Uh, National Corn Grower Association said that they uh, they were a little disappointed. America's corn farmers are disappointed in you. Our office is right down the road. We'd love to discuss with you the many benefits of corn. <laughs> Thank you, Miller Lite and Coors Light, for supporting our industry. Sam Adel, uh, Sam, Samuel Adams, uh, which is a good beer, by the way, said that no corn syrup and no rice, barley, hops, water, yeast. 
And again, Bud Light is just going to list their ingredients, water, barley, rice, and hops on the label. All right. And uh, uh, VMP of Marketing, Andy Goler, said, we think it's good for you, uh, for the beer industry as a whole, to be transparent about what's in your beer. And apparently, corn syrup really isn't bad for you, according to Chris Moore, Ph.D., uh, Men's Health Magazine, he's a contributor, says that refined sugars may uh, used to make beer are essentially eliminated during the fermentation process. So it's, it's, it doesn't matter. So, I, but I, but somebody has said something to somebody and said, oh, yeah, well, you know, if you say that Coors Light has corn syrup, then by gosh, people will stop drinking Coors Light. Well, I just uh, you know, leave those people alone. Let them have their Coors Light. Because you know what? If you're at a party with them, if you're at a party with them, uh, they don't have to worry about their beer getting drank. At least at, at a party in my house. You show up and you got some good beer, some Boulevard, you know, weed or whatever. Uh, you know, it'll get it'll get consumed. But uh, if you want to come to a party in my house and bring your Coors Light, your your Bud Light, or your Miller Light, it will not get touched. No worry about that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about grocery delivery. How do you feel about grocery delivery? I do all of the grocery shopping in my family generally, and of course I screw up. Like this morning, I was chastised because I didn't get milk the last time I was at the uh, at the grocery store, and uh, so. But that's that's another uh, discussion to be had. Apparently, uh, in the U.S., a mere three percent of grocery spending takes place online. Americans haven't been quick to jump on board when uh, with placing their grocery orders from the computers or smartphones. Markets in like the U.K. and uh, South Korea. Grocery penetration can be as high as 15%. That sounded funny. Only a quarter of consumers have tried an online grocery service in the past year, according to a new survey of more than 8,000 U.S. grocery shoppers. 26% of those shoppers, or 6% of all consumers, went on to say they order groceries uh, online more than once a month. Nah, I don't. I don't. I could see maybe if I was infirmed, sure, I might consider that. But I, I, first of all, enjoy the shopping experience. Second of all, I don't trust people when it comes to produce and when it comes to meats. I mean, it's easy to buy a frozen pizza. You know what a frozen pizza is, right? And you know that if you're going to, yeah, I want the DiGiorno deep dish, which, by the way, I just had. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. For a frozen pizza, it's really good. But, uh, um, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do that. And I don't think I ever will. I don't think I ever will because I, I go to several different stores. I go to Sprouts for my produce. I go to um, I go to Walmart. Oddly enough, I don't go to Target. Target's prices are too high. I go to a little store in uh, well, it's not a it's not a little. There's several of them in the Kansas City area called Hen House, and I and I go certain times of the week and buy my my groceries there because I know what day there are sales on different things. Uh, oh, and by the way, I heard Sprouts on Wednesdays is a big day. I work on Wednesdays. I heard Wednesdays is a terrific day. At Sprouts. And, I, and if you know anything about this, uh, Carson on the radio at gmail.com, Carson on the radio at gmail.com. I'd like to know. I've heard like that things are, some produce items are half price. I don't know. And it's pretty busy. I've never been. Let's talk about a sponsor of my show. It's Dots Pretzels. Dots Pretzels, originally made in uh, Fargo, North Dakota, now are being made in the Kansas City area. Why? Because the company is growing by leaps and bounds. Why? Because they are the best pretzels you've ever had in your life. They are absolutely wonderful. They're not the regular. Uh, you know, you've you've seen the ones in your grocery store. They're pretzel sticks, pretzel rods, pretzel, you know, twist pretzels, and they all taste exactly the same. They all taste like a pretzel. They taste like salt and flour, and that's about it. That's why you dip them in mustard and other stuff like this. You would be insulting these pretzels to dip them in anything. Anything, people. D-O-T-S pretzels.com. Dots pretzels.com. Uh, right now, they're trying to accommodate online orders, but it is not very cost-effective. So I would recommend if you do try to get them online, you order a bunch of them. Order five or ten of the big bags. Have them on hand because they are absolutely amazing. Uh, if you live in the Midwest, you might consider purchasing them for your friends and sending them yourself. Uh, or, you know, like I said, up and down the Midwest, you can find Dots Pretzels. I know they have them at Hen House Market here in the Kansas City area, and I also know them. They have Ace True Value Hardware Store, which I know sounds kind of weird, but no, Ace has got a lot of food items there now, at least in the area that I live at. The Ace, Ace Hardware, they've got barbecue sauces. Uh, they've got uh, pickled items. They've got some gourmet food items up by the registers and Dots Pretzels. It's kind of weird. It, it's kind of weird that a hardware store would do that, but they're doing it, and it's working. That's pretzels, baby. Woo-hoo-hoo. They are absolutely awesome. D-O-T-S pretzels.com.
But apparently, a grocery business, they say, about ready to take off online. Albertsons and a whole del Haas, I don't even know what that is, use Instacart and Fresh Direct. And they're, uh, they're seeing some growth. Many shoppers want to be able to see and touch certain votes. That's true. That's what I just said. Uh, 42% of people uh, using a grocery delivery service for the first time say it actually saves them time. One bad experience can potentially ruin a shopper's perception of the concept and makes, makes them never want to try it again. It's important for a company to get it right the first time. 75% of online shoppers say they continue to use the first retailer they shop from. So there you go. All right, online. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You know what else I'm not going to do? I'm not going to buy a car online. I'm not going to go uh, buy a car online and go to a vending machine. What's that, that Carvana or whatever, and you go and there's a big vending machine. It's a high-rise building, and your, your car is actually, you put, you put a big coin in there, and it's cute, you know. But what happens if, God forbid, one of the, the car in front of your car or your car gets hooked uh, hooked up, you know, like they do with the bags of uh, Fritos. And so you're stuck. All right? You you got no car. And the next guy who comes and orders a car is going to get two cars. You know? Well, I'm not going to do that. Drinking my green tea this morning. Uh, this fast food restaurant chain is uh, closing more locations than any other restaurant right now. And I'm not sure exactly what it is that's causing it. Maybe it's just... The concept needs a refresher. What is that chain? It is, ladies and gentlemen, Subway. Subway's closing a lot of stores. Um, They closed more than 900 stores in 2017, 500 in 2018. Plus more closures on the way in 2019. One report found the chain currently has as many as 1,100 fewer locations than it did a year ago. The last time Subway had so few restaurants was back in 2011, and this is the first time they have had fewer than 25,000 restaurants since then. Pretty interesting. Subway spokesman said the company is focusing on restaurant optimization and having locations in most profitable areas. Well, I think most restaurants are trying to do that. They were planning on opening 1,000 locations worldwide, including Mexico, United Kingdom, China, and India. As part of the optimization plan we shared uh, last year to achieve blah, blah, blah. Now I'm not going to read that. Other companies that are closing down a lot of locations. You ready for this? Applebee's. Outback Steakhouse. Noodles and Company. And Joe's Crab Shack. Um, I got to tell you, the last couple of times I've went to Joe's Crab Shack, and it's been a while, was not particularly pleased. Haven't been to Outback Steakhouse in years. And I really don't. I'm not a big Applebee's guy. Doesn't that sound like a, slob, a snob here? There are some chain restaurants that I think are pretty good. Uh, there is a cheesecake factory near my home, and it's it's pretty pretty good. It's pretty it's pretty good. You know, I don't go there very often. I think it's my kid's choice. Another chain is uh, Bonefish Grill. I like Bonefish Grill because uh, they have like a half price bang bang shrimp appetizer or so. All, all appetizers. I think it's Wednesdays. We haven't been in a while. Bang bang shrimp is uh, a really good appetizer. You know, there's some there are some restaurants that have just Appetizers they're known for. And if you can if you can come up with a an appetizer concept that is just rocks, it it will become epic, like the blooming onion at uh, Outback Steakhouse. All right. I can't think of anything right off the top of my head at Applebee's that is legendary as far as an appetizer is concerned. Uh let's see. Na, 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 na. Olive Garden, they're famous for their all-you-can-eat breadsticks. That's not an appetizer. Uh, Cheesecake Factory is famous for just their 400-page menu, and everything is gigantic. But uh, but there are some places that are known. uh, You know, obviously Hooters for their chicken wings. I guess they're chicken wings. (laughs) What a bottle of wine costs around the world. The Economist did a uh, worldwide... Uh, evaluation of what it would cost to get a, a single bottle of table wine. I'm not sure if this is going to be, uh, you know, like a Chablis or whatever, but a, t- a table wine, which is a house wine. It's just give me give me the lowest price wine you have. You know, and you say house. Generally, when my wife and I go out, a lot of times we'll say house Chardonnay. You know, it is what it is. There, there, there have been times and places for $13, $14 bottles of wine, but right now, not so much. Most expensive place in the world to get a bottle of wine, and, and this is going to stop me from going to Singapore. But, yeah, it's, it's Singapore. 
It's the most expensive place. $23.68 for house wine. For house wine. How dare you drink house wine in Singapore? Uh, here we go. The the 10 cities in the report ranked by price of a bottle of wine from least expensive to most expensive. Geneva is uh, is number 10. 837, Paris 1190, Copenhagen 1328, Oslo 1370, Zurich about 15 bucks, Hong Kong 16 bucks, Sydney about 20 bucks, Singapore 23 bucks. Oh, wait a minute. It says here Seoul and Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv's number one, $28.77. I don't know how I missed that in this article. And here are the 10 cities ranked not by wine, but all of all around expensiveness. So everything I guess there is more expensive. Sydney, Australia. I gotta say, whenever talking about Australian stuff, I have to do my uh, my Australian accent. Tel Aviv, Copenhagen, Seoul, Geneva, Oslo, Hong Kong, Zurich, Paris, Singapore. Can you believe that New York is not in there? I guess we're slumming it, in New York, right? All right, I'm gonna talk to you about something that is uh, near and dear to my heart. I have a I have a guacamole that I call Guac of Ages, trademarked. Thank you very much. And I hope to bring it to market sometime in the near future. Um, but uh, uh, it, it's it's wonderful. And then a lot of times people have, uh, they say, you know, what do you do to keep your, your avocados from turning around? Well, I have known what the secret is all along. I'm going to tell you that literally you'll be able to keep your, you'll be able to keep your, your guac fresh for a week in the refrigerator. But a new product is coming. For those of you who are adults who still eat candy, I do occasionally. I I like uh, sour gummy bears. Uh, Skittles Chewies. These are naked Skittles without a shell. They first became available in the U.K. Now there's no official word on whether they'll uh, become available stateside. But apparently they're they're quite popular. Naked Skittles. Well, they're, they're, what are naked M&Ms? They're just little balls of chocolate, right? <laughs> so, all right, here's how you keep your uh, guacamole. And this is this is an article I was just reading. I believe this is on MSN. Uh, guacamole oxidizes, starts to look funky, and it does pretty quickly. Now, what I used to think was if you left the pit in the uh, in the uh, guacamole, it would trick the fruit to believing it's still an avocado, and it would stay keep from going brown. That's that's not the case. What is the what is the problem? Oxidation. What is oxidation? It's when something is exposed to oxygen. So this article says, uh, put the avocado pit in the guacamole, uh, take a quarter of a fresh lime, squeeze it over the top, and then put it in a storage container and press down plastic wrap on top of it, okay? Press down uh, and get all the air out of there and just keep the air off of it. But they're saying you also should buy lime juice. No, you don't need to. You don't need the lime juice. You don't need the pit. It, it works perfectly fine just keeping it up. And if you have a vacuum sealer, if you have a vacuum sealer, uh, that's all the better. All right, so a vacuum sealer will also, um, it'll do, it'll, it'll, it'll stop the guacamole from turning brown. But that's, that's my final answer. As far as the, as far as the um, lime is concerned, I don't think the lime is all that important. It's the oxygen, oxygen. All right, so coming up on the first edition of Sound Bites with Rob Carson, Panera, Panera had a, uh, what they thought was a brilliant idea. Uh, pay what you can restaurant has not worked out terribly well. Aldi is coming out with some crazy limited time cheeses. It's time to have a come to cheese this moment. Uh, Wendy's is adding some new burgers to the menu. This is also, this is pretty cool. Coming up, the sweet spot for McDonald's French fries. All right, when you order your McDonald's French fries, when is it perfect to eat them? When do they start to kind of lose their luster? When do they become basically completely inedible? And let's face it, uh, they do become essentially pretty inedible after a while, and there's no saving them after that, even if you toast them in your oven. It just doesn't work. I've had some other places like Red Robin. You can generally toast those fries later, the, the big steak fries, and they're pretty good. All right? All right, check me out on Facebook, Rob Carson's Table. I want to thank you for joining me. Stick around for the second half of... Sound bites. And if you want to write me, Carson on the radio at gmail.com. Back in a few on foodie.com.
And we are back. Spoonie.com. Spoonie Radio. My name is Rob Carson. And I am a uh, talk show host, syndicated comedy writer, and uh, to some degree, I guess, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, frustrated on chef. Um, I, I like to cook. Uh, I like to create. One of the things I like to do most is uh, is create things from uh, what I have in the cabinets. And I know that you, many of you are that way as well. You know, I, I love being tasked by my wife, uh, you know, when I come home. Uh, what do you want? Well, I don't know. How about a pasta with whatever? And I'll say, mm-hmm, and I'll go in and I'll just peruse. And generally, 99% of the time I succeed. Occasionally, it's, 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 no, I, I don't fail. I don't fail. I don't fail anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't have epic fails with regard to, uh, the kitchen anymore. I used to. There were occasions that I had, uh, fails in the kitchen. Not so much anymore. Not so much anymore. So let's get into uh, some other uh, food news of the day. There's some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, it looks like there's a new vegan sour cream on store shelves. Follow Your Heart is the name of the company. Now, they they brought out vegan A's. My son got vegan A's one time. That just sounds weird, doesn't it? Vegan A's, it sounds like, well, my son, he got vegan A's. Really? Well, did he have to go to the doctor? Yeah, he did. He got some vegan A's and he had to, he had to go to the doctor. <laughs> Vegan A's. Anyway, this uh, this vegan gourmet sour cream is um, coconut based. Apparently, gives you a final product that's uh, thick and creamy in cost, uh, in uh, in uh, texture. Okay. Uh, also made without soy, lactose, preservatives, or gluten. Six dollars for a tub of it. If you can't find it, go to the uh, brand's store locator. Man, we should work really hard to get rid of stuff in food, don't we? No, you can't have the soy. But uh, wait a minute, I thought the soy was an alternative to stuff you couldn't have. Now you're saying you can't have the soy? I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, there's a, yeah, it's called, uh, it's a follow your heart vegan gourmet sour cream. Uh, you know, I know, I'm just going to eat sour cream. I'm just going to eat sour cream. That's it. Because I don't have a lactose intolerant. If you're lactose intolerant, sure, I understand it. I absolutely get it. I am dying to try these uh, Costco tacos. I, I really am. Uh, Costco has got these street tacos now. And, uh, you know, some of the Costco brands, if you go to Costco over by the fresh pizzas in the uh, refrigerated case, it's an open uh, case. And then you'll see these ready-made meals, whether they be meatloaf, whether they be, you know, whatever. And, uh, excuse me, now they have, um, now they have street tacos. So, uh, these look really good. They are chicken tacos, uh, 12 corn and flour tortillas, pre-cooked and seasoned chicken, uh, uh, chicken uh, shredded lettuce, cilantro, lime crema. That sounds great. Salsa and lime wedges. This is great. 15 to 16 bucks could feed a family of four. All right? That's a pretty good meal for the money. That's a, that's a pretty good meal for the money. Uh, the next time I go to Costco, I'm going to try them. And uh, and I will report to you because I'm, uh, I'm a big fan of Costco. Oh, 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 this is funny. I want to make this all about Costco, but Costco also has a five-tier wedding cake made of cheese wheels. This is spectacular. So it's really, I mean, genuinely a cheese cake. All right? This this thing has got, uh, it's $440. You know, the big cheese wheel, oh, my Lord. There was a restaurant I used to go to in, uh, in uh, Cincinnati when I lived there. And they had the, uh, the wait staff. You know, we're a bunch of uh, uh, singers and actors who, you know, are struggling. And so you'd, you'd go there and they'd sing. And uh, the owner of the place would sing if I were a rich man from uh, Fiddler on the Roof. But that's beside. He had a giant wheel of Parmesan. And literally this thing is uh, uh, two feet across. And he would hollow out a little bit in the middle. And then he'd take your parm, or your, your I should say, not your parm, but your, your pasta, your fettuccine, and you'd add your cream, and he'd scrape, scrape, scrape the bottom of the cheese and make your uh, your uh, fettuccine alfredo with that bowl. And it was marvelous. And he would spend $500 uh, once a month on one of these big old cheese wheels. But it was neat. It was a real neat uh, table-side presentation. So anyway, it's, uh, it's called the Sid Wainer & Son Cheese Lover Artisan Wedding Cake. 
Um, you can order from Costco. Ships within two to three days. Shipping includes uh, uh, the, the cheap, the steep uh, price tag, $440. Pardon me, I have a little cold. Uh, the gourmet cheeses include red Leicester, similar to English cheddar, Danish blue, subtle and tangy, Mercia Alvino, drunken goat cheese. Oh, God bless it. Um, and uh, basically, it's 24 pounds of cheese. Serves between 105 and 150 people. Apparently, you just uh, stack the cheese wheels into a wedding-worthy treat. And uh, then you add decorations, flowers, ribbons, all that other stuff that I'm no good at. But anyway, it's, it's available if you want an alternative to. And I don't like cake. I'm just not a big cake guy. Sorry. It's not a big cake guy. I, I love, you know, honestly, if there's a birthday cake at uh, work, I'll, I'll take a bite of cake. I don't, I don't like the whole piece of cake. I don't need the whole piece of cake. Speaking of cheese, cheese is a gift from God. There's, there's something I like to say um, when something is really good, really good. Uh, it's a gift from God, all right? And then there's some things that are just so, I don't know, essential in, in, in as far as food is concerned, as far as food is concerned. Essential in food. Like I would say, well, bread is obviously a gift from God. Bread is a gift from God. It's marvelous. Uh, I'd say mayonnaise is a, is a gift from God. I'd say steak is a gift from God. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some things that are pretty good. McDonald's French fries, maybe. Real close. Real close. They are. Oh my gosh. But cheese is uh is just wonderful. And um, it's just there are so many flavors and so many just awesome things. Now back in uh, December, they <laughs> Aldi did this um uh, advent calendar of cheese. 25 days of Gouda, cheddar, Edam, and more. And uh, in January, followed up with a heart-shaped uh, m- uh, cheddar wheels. So that was pretty big. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you knew this, but those uh, those uh, uh, Advent calendars with cheese, not only did they sell out in stores, but they went online for um, a much higher markup. People were buying the Advent cheese calendar for them. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't buy them. But anyway, here's what's coming out. Uh, launching on, uh, well, it was yesterday, actually, February the 6th. Uh, there are um, new cheeses priced at three forty nine, are named after uh, hit 80s songs. Are you ready? Now, as somebody who writes for a living, you know, these are okay. They're not out of this world. So here we go. Uh, wake me up before you goat goat Okay, all right. Sweet cheddar of mine. Isn't there a cheese that sounds like child? Cheddar, child, I can think whatever. Uh, girls just want to have Fontina. <laughs> Pour some Gouda on me. And total eclipse of the Havarti. Okay. So uh, you can also get your uh, your cheese delivered to your door. In September, Aldi announced their new partnership with Instacart. So they are delivering to 35 states, nearly 5,000 zip codes if you want your cheese. 25 days of Gouda. And now, of course, your uh, Grammy Awards. It's, by the way, named after the Grammy Awards. 80s songs. My wife and I have a cheese, cheese language, you know, we used to do all the time. It was like, Havarti, I'm Gouda, couldn't be cheddar. Yeah, I know, I know. These are the things you do. Nine years after introducing pay-what-you-can restaurants to several cities, Panera is admitting defeat, closing down its last remaining nonprofit, Panera Cares location. Politics aside, not a very bright idea. Okay. First opened its first uh, donation-based community cafe in St. Louis, 2010. Company founder Ron Shaich. Uh, said the the uh, restaurant opened like a typical P- P- Panera. And by the way, Panera um, started in St. Louis on Euclid, Euclid Avenue as St. Louis Bread Company. Okay? I remember when it was St. Louis Bread Company. It was wonderful. So uh, they offered meals at a suggestion donation price with the goal of raising awareness about food insecurity. In many ways, this whole experiment is ultimately a test of humanity, Shates said in a TED Talk later this uh, that year. Would people pay for it? Would people come in and value it? It appears no. 
Uh, at its peak, Panera Cares operated five locations, including one in Dearborn, Michigan, Portland, Oregon, Boston, and Chicago. Each restaurant designed to sustain itself, but the restaurants were complete were com- financially um, weren't financially viable. So apparently, they were only recouping sixty to seventy percent of their costs. The losses were attributed to students who mobbed the restaurant and ate, ate without paying. <laughs> As well as homeless patrons who visited the restaurant for every meal of the week. The location eventually limited the homeless to a few meals a week. week. You can't operate your restaurant as a soup kitchen. That's why there are soup kitchens. This is so silly. We had to help them understand that this is a cafe of shared responsibility and not a handout, Sage said in 2011. It can't serve as a shelter. We can't have community organizations sending everybody down. Some visitors noted in online reviews that the restaurant began to feel unwelcoming to the very people it aimed to serve, suggesting that Panera maybe didn't care about the community building as much as its original goal suggested. So apparently uh, by 2016, the Panera Cares experiment appeared to be winding down. Uh, Just, you know, I'm sorry. That's a dumb idea. They've tried this in other cities that pay what you would like. Pay what you, you know what people do when they say pay what you'd like? I'm going to give you nothing. I'm going to give you a couple bucks. You're never going to recoup your cost. Nobody will come into your restaurant and say, you know, that's not enough. I want to pay more. They just won't do it. So what do you think is going to happen? What do you think? I mean, listen, the the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and obviously that's the case with this one. A little fast food news, and I got a bunch of it here. Uh, McDonald's coming up. The optimum, the sweet spot for consumption of your McDonald's, frites. Let's talk about pit barrel cookers, though. Pit barrel cookers, created by a a man and his wife. He came back from uh, uh, military deployment in Afghanistan. He and his uh, troop were met by a group of veterans who prepared them barbecue. And when Noah smelled the barbecue, he said, I'm home. He said, I'm home. And he decided to become an entrepreneur, and he decided to take a barrel, make it into a cooker, and it is sensational. You literally get the pit barrel cooker in a box. You can assemble it in minutes. Literally, there's two screws just to put the handle on the top, which looks like a horseshoe. Uh, And then there's two handles on either side, so six screws altogether. But you can hang the meats in there or whatever you're smoking. You You can grill with it. This cooker will last you the rest of your life. They've got a special coating that keeps it from rusting, keeps it from peeling. It is absolutely, it is something you're going to love. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, you can see some of the food that I made with my Pit Barrel Cooker. Yeah, pitbarrelcooker.com, pitbarrelcooker.com. You can get the Pit Barrel Classic, which is a big one, uh, 18 and a half inches across, or you can get the Pit Barrel Junior, which is a smaller. You can use that for tailgating and whatnot. Pitbarrelcooker.com, I swear you're going to love it. You are going to love your pit barrel cooker. So, Wendy is is bringing back their sawsome bacon cheeseburger. I, I haven't had it. They announced their sawsome's permanent return, here to stay. What it is is a burger decked out with American cheese, cheese three strips of al- applewood smoked bacon, iceberg lettuce, sweet onions, pickles, and a side of sawsome sauce. Cheeseburger will also include the peppercorn mushroom melt with mushrooms, crispy fried onions, Asiago cheese. That sounds good. Smoked aioli and the Kansas City-inspired barbecue cheeseburger. The Swassum and peppercorn are available for $5.29, while the barbecue pick is $4.79. There you go. Might have to try that. Of course, uh, you know. Have you had, let me ask you this real quick. Have you had a a, um, quarter pounder with cheese lately? They, uh, you know, they switched to... um, a, uh, what is it, um, fresh meat. They don't freeze the burgers anymore at McDonald's. Much better, much better. And I know I'm not a big, I don't go out for cheeseburgers. I, I try to be reasonably healthy, and I, I very rarely go out for a burger. I just don't do a burger. I'd rather do a chicken sandwich, which drives my wife crazy because I'm never very creative. I always have a chicken sandwich. But McDonald's at Quarter Pounders, were really a, it's a market improvement, a really delicious little burger. Not like mind-bendingly awesome, you know. There's some places that, like the Whiskey River Burger at uh, at Red Robin, that's a pretty that's a pretty awesome burger. 
you know, as fast food burgers are concerned. So here we go. Um, this in uh, MSN, MSN, Mickey D's uh, French fry sweet spot. What they did, they, they went out and discovered, they went to a bunch of Mickey D's everywhere, uh, and they they ordered hot fresh fries out of the fryer, and they tasted them, and then they, after a minute, they tasted them, after a minute, they tasted them. They discovered that basically the interior temperature of a McDonald's is always the same, 72 degrees. Um, and here's what they say. The sweet spot is between one and five minutes, obviously. That's obviously, right? The... French fries become notably less appealing at about the 10-minute mark and are essentially inedible after 18 minutes. After 18 minutes. Uh, after that, I think you're done. I mean, honestly, they are bird food at that point. They're, they're bird food. They just they aren't good um, reheated. Do you have some French fries that you reheat? I mentioned earlier Red Robin. Um, also, there's a place... Um, here in uh, there are several places, uh, Steak and Shake and Freddy's. Freddy's. Um, they have the, this, these French fries that are long, skinny. And I discovered that those fries are pretty good reheated if you want them really. They'll be really crispy because they're very skinny. So almost like those, remember those potato sticks in a can? They're kind of like that except for warm. Uh, Wendy's is pretty good. Wendy's is pretty good reheated. But Mickey D's, I'm sorry, there's just no, there's no saving them. There's no saving them after they... Uh, after you've let them cool, don't even bother put them in the fridge. You may, might be, t- and I'm, I'm always tempted to do that. Just put them in the fridge. Now they're bird food, or I'll sneak some to my dog, which makes my wife mad. KFC is offering a new uh, crunchy, cheesy chicken masterpiece. What are they doing? They are breading a chicken sandwich with Cheetos. Yeah. Okay. Oh no. It, yeah. It's it's it's. Uh, uh, stuffed with fried chicken and Cheetos uh, is the exterior, and then it comes in a special Cheeto sauce, I guess. Cheetos sauce, which has, I'm, I'm assuming, that fake powdery cheese. Um, anyway, uh, it, it comes loaded with a generous layer of actual Cheetos. It is topped off with a, a custom Cheetos-flavored glaze, a Cheetos glaze. Unfortunately, they aren't uh, in the uh, flaming Hot variety. Uh, you can get them in, uh, I guess, Roanoke and uh, in Richmond, Virginia, North Carolina, and Raleigh and uh, Greensboro, and uh, in Georgia in Greenville. That's where they're serving them right now to see if they're going to bring them out nationally. They're going to have to do that. They're going to have to do that. Uh, by the way, last week I decided to uh, to do something really fun with, uh, and I don't, I don't, I don't fry stuff often, you know. In fact, very rarely. But I wanted to just for my uh, my Facebook followers uh, at Rob Carson's table, I wanted to see what it would be like to take Takis Fuego. Have you read Takis Fuego? These long, um, uh, not about three inches long, basically a rolled tortilla chip, and uh, they're fried, and then you toss them in a lime chili sauce. It's They're very red, uh, and they are absolutely the best thing in the world. And so I decided to... Uh, put them in the food processor, and bread chicken strips with uh, Taki Swaggle. Uh, what I did is I, I put uh, I marinated the chicken in um, uh, buttermilk for a little while, rolled in flour, back in the buttermilk, back in the Taki Swaggle. If I were to do it again, I think I'd leave the flour out because they were huge. I mean, they were like, they looked like giant corn dogs <laughs> by the time I got done with them. I think I, what I'd do is I'd add a little egg to the milk, the buttermilk, and then just roll it in the Takis Fuego. I'm going to try it again. I haven't perfected it, but it's pretty good. I'd also serve it I'd also serve it with a ramelade. I think a ramelade would be really good, or just ranch. Just ranch would be a real nice uh, condiment for that. So, thought you should know. You should do, you know, do that. Do that. Do a breading with di- this different stuff. I bet you, like, um, sour cream and onion potato chips would be really good breading if you, if you, if you uh, threw it in the food processor. Oh, one thing, I, I need to find a way, uh, other than like a mortar and pestle, to make it into more of a flour. Because um, it, it, was, it was more of a, in a food processor, it doesn't become powder. And I think it was a little more powdery like flour. It would be much more, it would, be, it would tend to stick to the chicken better. And make it, maybe even make a batter. Maybe, maybe even make a batter out of it. But anyway, you know, we should do that as a topic. Have you ever done something like that, made something... You know, made a batter, made a, uh, uh, I, I've done, well, I stole from uh, Planet Hollywood years ago. Planet Hollywood, I think they're defunct. 
Uh, they had a uh, uh, chicken strips that were breaded in Captain Crunch and then served with a dipping remoulade, and they were a terrific appetizer. They were really, really good. And uh, and I copied that, and I've done it a time or two. It's it's really good. <laughs> you ought to try it, man. If you've got kids, they'll go crazy. Why McDonald's won't serve burgers in the morning? Basically, here is, according to Richard Widman, former McDonald's employee, says customers have been requesting burgers in the morning since 1972 when the Egg, muffin, egg McMuffin was created, but as the breakfast menu expanded across kitchen equipment, thus the breakfast items and the regular menu items had to be cooked at this, on the same equipment. Uh, you cannot cook eggs at the same temperature as hamburgers because um, eggs get tough at that, that temperature. And burger patties at a low temperature prevents them from searing. Okay. Uh, what they're saying now in McDonald's um, is saying, well, that's t- t- true to some degree, but there just isn't enough space on a grilling service to be cooking. But now they're doing uh, breakfast all day, so I don't understand why that's a big deal. I don't, I don't like breakfast all day. I, I, in fact, I don't even – this is, again – you're going to not want. I don't much care for breakfast. I just never have. I'd rather have a piece of pizza for breakfast. I would rather have a cheeseburger for breakfast than eggs and bacon. I just, I, the eggs and bacon doesn't mean go, oh my God, I got to have eggs and bacon. Used to love a good omelet. Uh, maybe even love a, a frittata, you know, which is a, a, a quiche without a crust. But I just am not a big breakfast dude, you know? This is funny. This is really funny. Now, you remember a couple weeks ago, there was a woman at a Walmart, and it was like 6.30 in the morning, and she's riding around on a three-wheeled one of those electric scooters that Walmart has. And this happened in, uh, where the heck was it? Texas, January the 11th. And uh, the police were uh, called to an un- unusual drinking and driving call. Super Center in Wichita Falls, there's a woman drinking wine out of a Pringles can. Riding around an electric cart. Uh, blue jacket, black pants. Workers of the store asked cops to ban the woman for reportedly drinking out of the uh, cardboard packaging since 6.30 in the morning. The woman apparently had been driving an electric cart, most often used by people with mobility issues. Well, I'm thinking she probably had some mobility issues after drinking uh, you know, a lot of wine out of a Pringle scan. Well, there's a, there's a woman who loved this so much, Celeste Powers. She's come up with um, these... Uh, Pringles container tumblers. Okay, so they look like a sport bottle, but they're a Pringles container with a plastic lid and a straw so you can enjoy wine out of them. And I would assume there is some sort of, uh, uh, it's not exactly the, the, it's not the actual can because the can probably wouldn't hold up too much liquid very long because it's made of cardboard. But they're between twenty nine and twenty nine ninety nine and $35, depending on the uh, design. Uh I think they're I think they're hilarious. They're absolutely hilarious. If you if you see it on YouTube on my YouTube channel, uh, this episode uh, you'll see a picture of it. But uh, you got to see it. Just looks like a, it looks like a chip, Pringles can plastic lid and, uh, and a straw sticking out of it. And if you drink wine out of something that big, you've got a problem, kids. You've got a little problem. All right, let's talk about another uh, another sponsor, shall we? Um, Three Little Pigs Barbecue. Three Little Pigs is a small concern in the Kansas City area. They've only got one location, but they sell their rubs and sauces nationally, okay? Uh, Chris Marks is a guy who who won the American Royal World Series of Barbecue three times, which is epic, epic, competing with 600-plus competitors from around the world. And Chris Marks has made his sauce and his rubs for you to try they're wonderful for a variety of different things whether it be pulled pork whether it be for brisket whether it be for ribs whether it be for chicken just go to don't spell it out don't don't just put three number three three dash little dash pigs dash barbecue.com three dash little dash pigs dash barbecue.com he's got several sauces that are perfect for different meats, he's got several ribs that are perfect for meats. If you would live outside of the Kansas City area and want to preach the gospel of Kansas City barbecue like I have been doing for a very long time, 3-little-pigs-barbecue.com. Okay? Check that out. Check that out. 
Federal court uh, blocks San Francisco's health warnings on soda. Soda advertisements, I guess. Requiring health warnings on soda and sugar drink advertisers, advertisements were apparently deemed unconstitutional. The decision by a, a panel of 11 judges the Ninth Supreme Court said basically, nah, it's, it's unconstitutional. Judges use language from the Food and Drug Administration that sugars are generally recognized as safe and can be part of a healthy dietary pattern when not consumed in excess. So, basically said, you know, stop demonizing everything. Yes, people do overconsume in this country. They do in many countries around the world. But we cannot demonize an individual food item, although unless it's like partially hydrogenated vegetable oil because it's awful. And it's really, 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 really bad for you. All right? Basically, wanted to put a warning up there saying that uh, sugary beverages can cause tooth decay and obesity and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I know. Oh, I got to show you this. I got to show you this. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Oh, yeah. Now, there is a, a contest. KFC wants you to win. And this is a very disturbing, uh, it's a very disturbing picture. If you, if you aren't watching on YouTube, uh, you might just Google it. KFC wants you to lounge on a, a Colonel Sanders bearskin rug this Valentine's Day. Uh, it is it is really disturbing. It's basically a big white bear rug with his hands and feet, and then his head sticking up like uh, the lion, lion or tiger's head. So what you can do is uh, they're going to have three of these rugs to give away, and you can do it. Um, you can enter the contest by doing a couple things: a Photoshop battle, transform an image of Colonel Sanders' rug into a crazy romantic masterpiece, storytelling challenge. KFC start the story, and you complete the narrative to uh, turn it into a romantic romantic vignette, or uh, a drawing duel. Submit a one of the kind art piece of your ideal romantic evening inspired by the Colonel Sanders faux bearskin rug. It's creepy, dudes. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't want to win it. <laughs> Uh, one more story here, and that is um, uh, there is a wonderful story. Uh, Heinz right now has a another product. They have figured out how to pearl ketchup and make it look like caviar. And they've only got a few jars of this, and they're giving them away. If you go to Heinz.com, you can sign up to win one. It is absolutely hilarious. Uh, taking a little teaspoon, what looks like caviar, but it's really ketchup and putting it on a burger for your Valentine's Day. I think that is absolutely amazing. Guys, I want to thank you for joining me today. I want to thank uh, Spoonie.com, Spoonie Radio, for inviting me to be a part of this uh, of this broadcast. Uh, as, I, as I progress here, we're going to start having guests on the show, uh, hopefully be able to take the show on the road. Uh, where I can introduce you to uh, chefs in different kitchens, uh, also invite chefs into my studio, and also uh, lifestyle experts who are into, uh, you know, to talk about whatever. Uh, it could be restaurant trends, could be recipes. Share your stories as well. Uh, that's another big part of it. And also I hope to be able to uh, be able to include phone calls from you in the show as the, uh, as the show progresses. And I hopefully it will uh, progress and not regress, all right? In the meantime, follow me on uh, Facebook, Rob Carson's Table, on YouTube at Rob Carson. Have a glorious day, and we'll see you again soon. Spoonie Radio.